turn the time over to you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I um I avoided telling you what I was uh what topic I was doing until way late, hoping that maybe we wouldn't turn people away when they saw it was me tonight, but it looks like that didn't work. <laughs> so darn it. Um I'm gonna need a lot of help. I don't have like 45 minutes worth of intelligent things to say. And so uh playing to my strengths is more of a kind of a teaching classroom role. And so, Jennifer, I don't know your situation. If you're just eating dinner right now or whatever, that's fine. And you can tell me no when I when I call on you. But you will need your gospel library app so that you have access to about three things in there, if you could. And uh, Michael, do I have permissions to share this, my screen? Yep. Thank you. <clears throat> so just rhetorically, um, I would start with this question. What will be the next disruptive societal shift? And I think in every generation, there's some of these, right? So right now, I think my brother-in-law said it best. He's, he was like, there's a lot of members of the church that just were not ready to address same-sex marriage, to address issues with gender identity, um, to address uh, homosexuality. It's like, it's like it completely blindsided a lot of the members of our church. Um, he, he said they were ill-prepared. So uh, we're, we're still going through a lot of those societal changes. What will be next? And will the saints be ready? And I'm, I don't want to get weird. I don't want to pretend like I know what's next. But I was thinking about something that Elder Hales said a long time ago. You might remember um, this. Is that big enough that one of you could read that? Chris, can you read that? In recent decades, the church has largely been spared the terrible misunderstandings and persecutions experienced by the early saints. It will not always be so. The world is moving away from the Lord faster and farther than ever before. The adversary has been loosed upon the earth. We watch, hear, read, study, and share the words of prophets to be forwarded, forewarned, and protected. For example, the family, a proclamation to the world, was given long before we experienced the challenges now facing the family. The living Christ, the testimony of the apostles, was the prepared in advance of when we will need it most. Yeah, thank you. I was thinking about that. Some saints were ready for those societal shifts. Um, the proclamation to the world on the fam the family of proclamation of the world was given far before we would really genuinely need that. And so um, then he says, the living Christ document was prepared in advance of when we will need it most. Now, I don't know if this is the thing that's next, but we see some shifts right? Some major societal shifts. And one of those is the, the fastest growing religion in the United States of America is spiritual but non-affiliated, right? And um, I just imagine if, it, if this belief in Jesus Christ uh, on a societal level takes the same tone and tenure as the most recent um, societal disruptions on um, gender and sexuality. Like what would that look like in social media? What would the tone be of those influencers as um, they perhaps ridicule, um, call us old fashioned, maybe call for laws against some of the ways that we worship and et cetera. Again, I don't wanna get weird. I'm just imagining as a next societal shift, um, we were visiting a Catholic church here in Dallas recently, beautiful building, Christ is King Catholic Church. We wanted to gather with them and talk to their youth um, ministers. I don't remember what they call them, but our counterparts in the Catholic church and just see what they were doing and build some bridges. And it was awesome. You guys, if you haven't been in a Catholic church lately, you should. It's so wonderful. You go in, it's uh, just this beautiful hall, stained glass windows, probably a hundred stained glass windows, paintings everywhere. And, and of course, they've got the statues in there. 
uh, right up front is a 20 foot painting of, of Jesus, you know, with the scars in his hand. Um, if the uh, bread representing the body of Christ is there on display, they'll have a candle lit. As we talk to them, uh, we said, what do you worry about with your, with your youth or what are they struggling with? And this one youth leader, it was so great how she said it. She said, you know, in all that we do and teach, it still seems like somehow the whole Jesus aspect is completely lost on them. And I sat back and smiled a little bit because we worry about the same exact thing. But sitting there in that room, I was like, how could they miss Jesus? He's right in front of them. He's in like 60 of these stained glass windows, right? It all The name of their church is Christ is King. <laughs> how did they miss the Jesus aspect? And we would say the same thing about, about us. Okay, so whether um, an attack on our belief in Jesus Christ is the next great societal shift or not, isn't the point. The point is we can do far better at focusing on Jesus Christ. That will arm us and our students against all sorts of things. Whatever that next societal shift is, this will be a powerful and important thing for, for our students. So what evidence uh, do you see that we actually are focusing more on Jesus Christ um, more than ever? Can you open up to the most recent general conference? Thinking about what you know about the most recent general conference, or maybe just reviewing the chapter or the um, talk titles, can you just chime in? What do you see that shows we have maybe redoubled our efforts to focus on Jesus Christ a little bit better? The first one I see is Jesus Christ is the strength of youth. <laughs> yeah, and that's, that sounds just a little bit fresher, doesn't it? Sounds just a little bit different. Jesus Christ is the strength of youth. I'm not saying that we have failed to focus on Jesus Christ in the past, but that's a, that's a different kind of focus. Um, that whole talk with Elder Uchtdorf, thank you. Was that Sister Thompson? Thank you. Is this a trick question? No. Because uh, one of the talks is called The Answer is Jesus. Yeah. Is that Elder Olson? Yeah. Yeah. And it, that pairs so nicely with um, Elder Uchtdorf, right? Because um, Elder Uchtdorf introduces the For the Strength of Youth. He's like, There's, it's going to be a lot less prescriptive. And, and he talks about that. Jesus Christ is the answer. And so if, you, if your students have a question, if you in your life have a question about um, what the right standard is, what the right answer is, before we study that principle, maybe we should ask ourselves, how well do you know Jesus? Um, that's That's got to be at the start. Thanks, Brother Cunningham. That's great. I know it wasn't a trick question. I was just having fun. <laughs> <laughs> Another one Maybe. is drawing closer to the Savior, yeah, which kind of goes along with President Nelson's final talk of the conference. Say a little bit more about that, would you? His final talk of the conference is uh, was staying on the covenant path, mostly, and staying close to the Savior. I Good. could talk about it for a long time because <laughs> it's <laughs> it's quite the talk on that one. Okay. In fact, we're going to study that tonight in our institute class. I, I love it. Thank you. It just felt so refreshing. Um, um, Elder McConkie's talk on Saturday used Jesus as the ultimate example of 
uh, how to teach. He uh, told the story about the four people lowering the man through the roof to be healed. And he's like, Jesus didn't see that as an interruption, right? That there's some powerful lessons. Um, he, I think he was the one that says, we studied uh, the life of the Savior, not what we thought we knew about the Savior. Just we tried to see him as he really is, I think is the phrase that, that he used. And so I appreciate that. Elder um, Schmidt. He started with this story about partaking the sacrament, and he's like, uh, I, mean, I know I'm supposed to take his name upon me, but which name shall I take upon me? And that's going to be kind of a key here in a second, something that I'm going to invite you to practice. Okay, oh, so is that is general conference. I want to show you one more thing. Oh, Chris, thank you. Brother, Hayes, I was just, just... going to say the, uh, are you still willing talk had in it um a really good phrase key phrase for students and well all of us obviously um if our spiritual foundation is shallow or superficial we might be inclined to base our willingness on a social cost benefit analysis or a personal inconvenience index we're easily swayed by social nor norms <laughs> what the new social movement is or whatever it may be if our feet aren't firm that's a perfect uh, link. Thank you. Sister Thompson, did you have another one? Well, I just wanted to correct what I said. I said that it was President Nelson's final talk of the conference. It was not. The one I'm talking about was the Sunday, Sunday morning, his talk of Sunday morning, Overcome the World and Find Rest, where he okay. talks about um staying on the covenant path and staying close to the savior. It was one of the most wonderful talks I've ever heard. Great. So all of that is just to say, yeah, I, I think that if you were looking for evidence, there's some evidence that we're focusing more on the savior. Let me show you one more thing. Can, can you open in your gospel library app to this? So we're going to the church's teacher manual, Teaching in the Savior's Way. This is a screenshot about how you navigate to that resource in your gospel library app. So it starts down here from the home screen. Then you go to the library and you go up like this and you'll find it. Can you just give me a thumbs up if you're able to find that? So I know you're good. Okay, so that's the directory about how you find it. That page should have you looking at kind of like a table of contents situation. Yeah, and you'll notice that part one, um, what does part one say? Focus on Jesus Christ. Part two says principles of Christ-like teaching. And I want you to tap on part two. And as you... I want you to skim through part two. Uh, I, th I think actually the first one is just a picture, right? You got to swipe and then it will have a bunch of sections. There's a bunch of headings on that next page. And then you swipe and there's a bunch of other headings and then a bunch of other headings. I just want you to skim and notice the headings for the new teacher manual in part two. Just keep swiping and reading the headings. What do you notice? Well, if I'm in the right place, Brother Hayes, I'm not sure I am, but it says part two, principles of Christ-like teaching. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, what do you notice about all those headings within there? Love those you teach, teach by the Spirit, teach the doctrine, invite diligent learning. Yeah, can you go into those? I want you to actually go into those parts. 
to read the headings within those that you just read. Sister Ellen, do you see what I'm getting at? Yeah, it's all about the Savior. Every heading. So, for example, in Teach the Doctrine, this is one part of part two. The Savior learned the doctrine, and then it's like, probably you should too. The Savior taught from the scriptures, probably you should too. The Savior helped people seek, recognize, and understand truth, probably you should too. The Savior taught truths that lead to conversion and build on faith. The Savior helps people find personal relevance in his doctrine. That's just one of the sections. It's all based on what the Savior is and what he does. And um, so just I, I'm just building a little more evidence that if you would have asked me three years ago, how are you doing focusing on the Savior? I would have said, I'm doing great. But from where I'm standing now, I can say I wasn't doing as great as I thought I was. Sometimes we teach about him indirectly. I used to have this habit of writing down uh, in testimony meeting how many minutes or how many testimonies it took before we mentioned Jesus Christ, with the exception of closing in his name. We're getting better as a church. I can report, at least in uh, where I'm sitting, in my experience, we're getting better. Okay, all of this is to say we can do a little bit better at focusing on Jesus Christ. Two practices. The first one you're ready for right now. The first one I want you to think about in administration that we, I put that in quotes because I don't know if there really is administration. There's only ministering. But I want you to imagine this. You've just written a great email response to a parent or to a student, depending on your situation, uh, describing the requirements for the course. So in seminary, maybe a parent has a question about makeup work. And that's always kind of a tense moment, right? In institute, maybe they're like, um, remind me what I need to do or help me register for a course. Okay, so you've written this great email out. Will you take a full minute right now? Will you write down something that you would put in that email communication to include the savior? How would you do that? Go ahead and write a full minute. I also think that one of the things that the Lord did really well is that every time he intersected with uh, government or authority or anything like that, he never spent one minute arguing or debating or anything like that. He would just always answer about the work that he was going to be doing. And I think that's a good example for us, especially in this day when there seems to be so much political strife, not only in, in America, but everywhere, that that stuff wasn't important to him. And so it shouldn't be important to us. He's like, you don't understand my kingdom. <laughs> I'm talking about something totally different than what you're talking about. Uh, that's a great point. Thank you for bringing that up. Hey, would, would somebody mind sharing what sentence or sentences did you write? What, what are you going to put at the end of your email to include the Savior? Well, I don't know if this is what you're looking for, but I just said, okay, I'm talking about the course and all of the Institute, you know, stuff. And at the end, I would say, remember, the Savior loves, loves each one of us. As you navigate this institute class, I hope you know that I do too. That's awesome. 
Sister Allen, I'm not looking for anything in particular except for the Savior, and uh, that absolutely fulfills the invitation that I, I gave you. Yeah, I love that. Think about the power that comes into the conversation just by bringing up his name. Appreciate that. Thank you. Ben, are you able to talk Where in your situation? Are you there? Yeah. Um, so uh, I was uh, thinking about a student who actually just reached out to me to be unenrolled in the class. And I, I was thinking, you know, Max, I'm, I'm happy to help you get uh, to, to help you along that process. I hope that your circumstances uh, help you get grow closer to the Savior and that being in the cohort that you're in um, with your fellow classmates help you increase your testimony. Awesome. Awesome. It's, it can be just that simple. You're talking about being enrolled. Hey, have a great semester learning more about Jesus. Um, three, five, well, it was before I moved here. I made a, 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 a goal some years ago. I never talk about punctuality or attendance without bringing up the Savior. And, and so just a kind of an invitation. This isn't an assignment, but an invitation, maybe a challenge. Can you bring up the Savior in everything you do administrative-wise when you're talking to a, a student or a, or a parent? Any thoughts about that or, or additional uh, or a question? Okay, that's the quick one. Here's the fun one, and that is in teaching. After we look at this list, I would be curious to know if Michael wants to add any um, thoughts to this. But as we teach... Um, here are examples of some questions that can help us focus on Jesus in like a really renewed way. I think that these questions represent better thinking maybe than we have had in the past. Um, Sister Allen, do you want to start reading these, uh, maybe the first half for us? Read them nice and slow. How do these verses or this principle help you understand your relationship with Jesus Christ? What quality, characteristic, role, or title of Jesus do you see here? Can we label it? How does Jesus perform that role or title for you in your life? As one who strives to take his name upon them, how can you perform that role for others? Okay, we pause right there, Sister Ellen. By the way, if you're taking a screenshot, now is the time to do it. This is the, this is the place. Okay, so you can see these would work in almost any situation where you're teaching, and notice those three particularly. They they build kind of in a chain. All right. So, what quality, characteristic, or role do you see? But instead of just leaving that and, and going, isn't he wonderful? Then we ask, how does he fulfill that role in your life? Right? So for example, Jesus Christ is the creator. And sometimes it's like, okay, amazing. He's the creator. I love him. I, I worship him with all my might. That's wonderful. But what if it, instead you said, in what way is he a creator in your life? And you might get some answers like, well, I exist because of him. That's not bad, but... Just think about what it was like before he arrived. The earth was void and without form and darkness reigned, right? And so the part of being a creator is to bring order to something that's chaos, to bring light, to fill uh, something that was empty, right? So how has Jesus done that in your life? Now we're starting to feel some things about Jesus. And then you notice that last one that Sister Allen read, as one who strives to take his name upon you, how can you perform that role for others? That, that question is two weeks old. Uh, that comes straight from general conference that, that we were mentioning. Which name are we going to take upon us? That can help us to, to apply. Sister Allen, you want to keep going? How does this principle strengthen your reliance on the Savior? 
What do you know about the Savior that helps explain the situation or commandment? How do these verses help you see how the Lord feels about you? What does this teach you about coming to Christ? How did the Savior teach or exemplify that principle? How does knowing that make you feel about Jesus? Okay, those are examples of questions. Mike, do you want to add any? Brother Goldheart. <clears throat> I don't know if I'd add any. This is a pretty good list. Um, I don't know, that's a really good question. Maybe... How does um, how does what we so what if it was a, the end of the lesson type of question? So instead of what what like with the first bullet point of what to this verse or the principle, but um, maybe at the very end, a simple question of from what we've studied today, how has this improved your relationship with Jesus Christ? Question. Love it. So, something simple like that. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. So if you need some notes, now's the time to make them because we're going to do this final practice. Uh, we're going to go into some verses together and uh, something particularly that I've been working on is to try to find the Savior where at first he doesn't appear to be. And I've just had such a wonderful experience doing that with, with my students and finding him with a lot more frequency. Okay, so I'm not sure exactly how we want to do this. Maybe we'll just read um, all together. And I wonder if we should uh, get into groups to talk about how to find or what questions would you ask to um, bring the Savior into the conversation. That's going to be what it is. So I had to pick some verses to study. And uh, I know not everybody is going along with Come Follow Me, but all of seminary is, and some of Institute is uh, in the Old Testament. So we're going to go to the end of the book of Ezekiel. And man, Ezekiel has nothing on Isaiah. We only complain about Isaiah because we're commanded to study Isaiah. Isaiah's got nothing on Ezekiel. So Ezekiel 47, if you could get there. The second reason I picked these verses is because Jesus doesn't overtly seem to be in the verses at first. And the third reason I picked this is because maybe you've heard about the verses before. Maybe you'll kind of remember this. So just a little context. Ezekiel has this vision where uh, an angel tour guide walks him through um, measuring the temple. And now he's on the outside of the temple and there's going to be some water and there it's going to grow in a stream and watch for that. So you're looking for Jesus, but particularly how are we going to like, what would you ask um, to, to help your students? And I have written here, identifying, understanding, feeling, or applying principles. Just how are you more simply, how are you going to um, invite Jesus into the conversation? Okay, so let's read them together. And uh, if you have on your lenses to find the Savior in here, that would be wonderful. Jennifer, are you able to read where you're at? Yeah, I am. Do you, would, yeah. would you be willing to read for us? Sure. Afterwards, okay, he ahead. brought me again unto the door of the house, and behold, the waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. For the forefront of the house stood toward the east and the waters came down under from the right side of the house at the south side of the altar then he brought me out of the way to the gate northward and led me about the way without unto the utter gate by the way that looked eastward and behold there ran out waters on the right side and when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward he measured a thousand cubits and brought me through the waters, the waters were to the ankles. Again, he measured a thousand and brought me toward the waters and the waters were to the knees. Again, okay, so he he's measuring out like a thousand meters, a thousand yards, a thousand cubits. The 
as they go uh, further and further away, the water is getting deeper and deeper. Yeah, keep going. And again, he measured a thousand and brought me through and the waters were to the loins. Afterward, he measured a thousand and it was a river that I could not pass over for the waters were risen, waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. And he said unto Thanks. me. Um, let's have Chris, Christopher, could you pick it up right there? We've got to find out if these waters are good or bad. And he said unto me, son of man, hast thou seen this? Then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. Now when I had returned, behold, at the bank of the river were very many trees on one side and on the other. Then said he unto me, these waters issue out towards the east country and go down into the desert and go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be healed. And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth, whithersoever the river shall come shall live and there shall be a very great multitude of fish because these waters shall come thither for they shall be healed and everything shall live whither the river cometh and it shall come to pass that the fishers shall stand upon it from Engedi even unto Enaglam I hope that's correct it's exactly it right. shall, there should be a place to spread forth nets their fish shall be according to their kinds and the fish of the great sea exceeding many but the merry places thereof the marshes thereof shall not be healed they shall be given to salt and by the river upon the bank thereof on the side and on that side shall grow all trees for meat whose leaf shall not fade neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed it shall bring forth new fruit according to those to his months because their waters they issued out of the sanctuary and the fruit thereof shall be for meat and the leaf thereof for medicine okay i'm not going to say anything about what the principle is i'm just asking if you're teaching this these verses how are you going to bring the savior into this conversation what what might you ask or highlight are you asking me or everyone sorry it's for everyone but you can start if you have something i don't want to put you on the spot well just in thinking of it um it tried to enga be engaging before i would read or have somebody read it i would say the minute somebody feels jesus in these words say something whether it's hallelujah or get in the camera or whatever it may be. So, so Christopher, how long did it take you before you saw Jesus? Oh, right away. Waters. I mean, it just, you know, and then, then it just becomes a, it, a continual thing as we read. Uh, either him or, you know, his actions. What he will later be teaching. Good. I was going to say the a similar thing where I would just ask the class. So uh, it, it doesn't appear that there's the savior in here, but I challenge you that there is. What can you find? Where can you find the savior in here? And just let them start. And I found that a lot of times when I've thrown that out or something similar to that, when I don't necessarily know the answer, or even if I have an idea of an answer, if I ask a question like that, I get much better responses and usually ones I didn't expect. I might get one that I thought of, but I'm not the brightest yeah. person in the class. And so <laughs> there may be plenty of other better examples than the one that I came up with. So Ben, can we just throw your question out for a second and, and now become the class for just a second? Ben, you, you said, um, how, what did you say? How do you see the savior in here? Yeah. Where, where did you see the savior in these verses that don't seem to right. have the savior in it? Chris kind of started with, with verse one. What else are you seeing here? Are you asking everybody or me? Ev sorry, everybody. Yeah. Okay. Christ is the healing water. He is the light of the world. And wherever his influence is found, he is the healing factor in, in everybody and everything. That is a beautiful principle. 
and and well named and well stated. Okay, so um, Jesus Christ is the healing water. He heals everything he touches. What would be maybe a next question you would ask after the after a student has identified that? Where are you going to go from there to to keep that? What's the one thing you can can't live without? What's the one thing you can't live without? You can live without food for a pretty long time, but you cannot live without water. Cool. I'm cheating. I'm looking at your list of questions, and I think like. How does this teach you about coming closer to Jesus Christ? Good. How, do, how does knowing that he's the healing water make you feel about Jesus? Okay, right. good. You, using so, these, the, these kind of pocket questions that you've got, you know, these are those ones that are great follow on questions. You know, they've given an answer and then this is where you dig deeper. How does so, Jesus perform that in your life? And I mean, you could almost just list every attribute about the water there and, and keep asking those questions. Where did the water come from? Well, it comes from the temple. How's Jesus related to the temple? How have you felt the power of Jesus Christ in your temple experiences? Brother Cunningham. I just like to put that the, the, the last connection on it. How is that relevant to you today, October, what is it, the 14th, right now, 17th, whatever the date is today? What's that look like when you get done with the Zoom and walk out? How does that affect and change something in your life right now? How can you apply it to eating dinner at McDonald's? Because th that's where you're going next. <laughs> how is that? Because we can we can identify that. We can see Christ. We can know how it relates to him and his teachings. But how is it relevant right here and now? Good. So, right. I'm so just really passionate about that one. For hey, our purposes today, I would just tweak that a little bit. Instead of saying, how is this applicable to you right now? I guess I would say something like, okay, so Jesus is living healing waters. He's a healer. If you're going to take his name upon you, how can you be a healer today? So maybe just being a little more specific in this case, a little more specific for this particular practice of really zeroing in on the Savior. I want to be a healer because he was a healer. And I want wherever I go, the grass to grow greener still, right? I, I, I want to be like that living water. Look, I just testify that the intent of the word of God was always to point us to Jesus Christ. We will find him when we seek him. And as we do so and get very good at that, as our students become very good at finding the Savior in the scriptures, maybe they will be able to find him in their own life a little bit easier and draw closer to him and rely on his power. And I leave that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Josh. I, I really appreciate it. Brothers and sisters, as we conclude this, and as you start to look at the, the situations that, that are going on within your course, um, I encourage you each to take a minute and just kind of discover how are things going um, what are things that you can improve? How are your students doing? I'm going to be sending a link in both the Facebook page as well as in uh, our Canvas um, teacher link, where I'd like to invite you to ask your students to take a quick survey, uh, where I want them to be able to just anonymously give some feedback of how things are going in the class. And then what we'll do is we'll collect the data and then we'll share with each of you as well as our leadership of how things are going in our classrooms. This gives us a little bit of a window in, into um, what our students are thinking and how we can improve. But one of the questions that I'm that are that's asked is, do you feel like uh, Jesus Christ is a center part of or a central uh, part of the classes that you're taking? It's real. I'm really interested to see what they think and to be able to learn from them. 
So please take a few minutes. Uh, it'll be available in about 24 hours for each of you to, to take and then to share it off with your, your, your students. That would be super helpful. Um, thank you. I appreciate everything you're doing. Uh, let me just go ahead and end.